Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do a replacement, another video actually, on replacing the sight glass in a master cylinder. This is the clutch sight glass off the VFR 750. And of course, another VFR video, but uh, hey, you know, this thing's old. It needs love. And so what we're going to love today, love on that is, is we're going to change out this uh, sight glass, but not with the one we make on the lathe like the other one I did for the front brake, but we have the actual bona fide replacement part here. And so it comes with an O-ring. I got five of these kits, five, count them five, because uh, I'm going to keep them in stock, but uh, in case I screw one up. So uh, that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to get this one out somehow, the whole thing, not just the glass part or the plastic part, and we're going to figure out how to press this in and keep it from leaking. Seriously, another video about putting a sight glass in a master cylinder? You already did that. Well, yeah, I'm going to do one using the correct parts this time. I know what you're doing. You're just trying to make content to put up on your channel. That's all you're doing. You're just trying to make shit up. I am not just making shit up for the channel. This is good content. Somebody may be able to use this stuff. Well, fine. Hey, I'm done. I'm not going to deal with you anymore. Fine. Leave. <laughs> Don't need you anyway. Hey, um, I'm sorry about that. I, I I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm just kind of in a bad mood because my freaking underwear is so tight. Okay, I'm sorry too. Come on over and give me a hand. We're buddies, right? Well, I'm certainly glad that exchange is over with. Those two need to make nice. So, anyway, let's get back to this. First thing I'm going to do is take a look at this. And I've already kind of glanced at it, but if you can see down as far as the thickness here goes, this right there, this really looks like it's the right thickness. We can line it up to that and it's pretty much the same. I know my fat hands are in the way, but it is what it is. It's a tiny part. You can also see naturally that the front hole is much larger than the back inside hole. So that says there's a shoulder in there and you can kind of see that. So there it is right there. You can, I'm pretty sure that little black outline is the O-ring that goes in there most likely. I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know. And then this is the overall major diameter of it, which uh, again, I'm pretty sure is 18 millimeter. So I gotta figure out how to get this out Probably going to involve some heating, maybe some cussing. I don't know. We'll try to keep the heating off. I'm sorry, the cussing out of the video. But if in case I got to heat it, I'm going to take it apart anyway and clean it. I don't have a rebuild kit for this, but it was working fine. We will replace this um, top hat uh, seal here, whatever you want to call it. Looks like a top hat, at least to me. And because I'm pretty sure I got one of those from another kit that I didn't use it on. So we'll take this apart, set the parts aside. I'm not going to show you all that, you know, cleaning it and reassembling it or disassembling it for that matter. We're just going to get it apart and get ready to do this particular job. We'll show you this. When you take these apart, this is usually what you find. Down in there, buried in that crud, is a spring clip or a seat clip that needs to come out to take those guts out. So really the best thing to do is just hit it with some PB blaster or WD-40 or some sort of a penetrant and then uh, blow it out with your air gun and then go in there with, the, uh, with your long, you know, spring clip pliers, which I do have, that are designed to go down in these uh, master cylinders. All right, so yeah, that's pretty crusty, but we'll get this out. Um, again, I just wanted to show you what you typically see, especially when this guy is uh, trashed. That's why, that's what its purpose is, is to keep that from happening. Now, in the other video, if you recall, I put a message in there about watching these things from squirting back up at you, and usually there is a little tang, kind of like this, that fits in like this so it covers that tiny hole right there and that's where it would squirt back up when you first push that in until the piston you know that little gasket on the piston itself goes past that or the seal i should say well that's what this is for to shield that from squirting out of the master cylinder and this was laying over here in the side so somehow it got dislodged so that's why that was doing that so this is what it looks like in case you have that situation you can usually order these separately um, they're pretty universal on these hondas at least but that's all it is just a little thing that pushes in these little tangs are what's kind of spread out spread out a little bit larger than that uh, mostly round hole there and it just snaps in there just friction so just want to show you that real quick now what we're going to do here is i got it all apart of course and of course so first thing we're going to do is uh going to get this out somehow and then we're going to do an ultrasonic bath on this and clean it up real well. Then we'll reinstall the new one. So I'm just going to try to figure out how 
to do this. Um, like I said, I've never done this before. Remember the other one, we just broke the glass out and we made one on the lathe that fit inside this area right here. And we want to replace the whole thing, which is out here. Now, I would wager that Honda would have used some sort of a, you know, I don't know, an agent, Loctite agent or something. I mean, when I put this thing back in, I'm going to go ahead and put Loctite 515, which is really good for metal-to-metal -metal seals, like a gasket maker for that kind of thing. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just break the plastic out like we did in the other one. Get it out of the loop. We'll kind of heat this up a little bit and see if we can just pop that thing out. Uh, that seems like the most likely prospect on this uh, because you're going to have to replace it anyway. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's give that a shot because I don't think we're going to be able to push it out from the back. Even if I made something like with a bolt and a nut to push it, you know, it'd be a little extreme. So let's just give it a shot. Simple stuff first. There it goes. That's got to be an O-ring. So there's your edge on the inside that goes up to the shoulder, which is this part right there. And, uh, yeah, you know what? I just think just a pencil torch or something just to warm up this area in case they did use something on there. And then we'll uh, just kind of pry it out, see what we can get out of that, because um, I don't know if this is going to be a real bitch to get out or not. Never did one like this. All right, so I just kind of went in there and pried on this. I had the camera off, and so the center section comes out. So that's cool. Get that out of the way. There would be no sense pulling on that then, huh? So we got to figure out where we can do this on because they don't really have a good edge. Oh, I know exactly what the way is. I can see it now. You know what we're going to do? Th that O-ring is in there. I keep forgetting that. That O-ring is going to give, especially when we heat it up. And uh, it'll get out of the way, and then we should be able to get a purchase on that lip down there and then get uh, get this thing out. Yeah. That's probably the key right there. We heat it up. I bet you that'll start to soften up and get out of our way. Oh, yeah, actually, maybe we can do it now. Who knows? There it goes. Look at that. Look at that. All right, good. So that came out. Something came out. Oh, and you know what? That's not the O-ring. That is just part of the plastic uh, glass that stayed behind. Huh, I thought it was an O-ring. Never mind. There is one in there. You can see it. There it is there. I was just thinking that that was it but you know since this is kind of clear it looked like that right so yeah this should be not a big deal you know I can get a good purchase on that edge and we'll pry it right out but I think we're going to have to heat it and I'll have to put something here to help me lever so um, I'm going to go to the vise and do this it's going to be easier to do that so let's give it a shot well let's try this first it ain't the most stable thing in the world but then again neither am i now some might say that uh i may be over complicating this but uh seriously guys when do i ever do that okay i'll use my richard Pryor because i used torch to bend that get it get it oh it's moving already Look at that. That's pretty neat. Gotta not scratch that inside if all possible. Oh yeah, she's moving. Like I said, I never did this before, so kind of learning as I go. Okay, and here's the problem when you're hitting the same edge as it because it's just rocking itself. So um, I'm going to see if I can get a better uh, setup on this and we can just pop it right up. But that's definitely moving, so this is going to be not a problem at all. So if you're doing this and you follow the exact steps that I did, you're sure to fuck, um, I mean, do it properly. Uh, no problem whatsoever. If I'm gentle, I can get in here and just rotate it and pop this thing out like that. Yeah, cool. With this ring, I the break. Okay, so the O-ring's out. Got a little schmoo in there. We're going to go ahead and put this in the ultrasonic. I got one little nick right there. I don't think it's going to be a problem, though. I can clean that up maybe with a little... Emery. Again, you know, simple stuff. It doesn't need to be over overcomplicated. Like, when do I ever do that? And so, uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get this cleaned up, and when we come back, we'll get set up to reinstall the new one. Or I should say, install the new one. Reinstalling would be reinstalling the old one. Jeez, grammar. Every time I turn this thing on, since it's about waist high, I get the feeling that it's going to nuke my balls. Okay, folks, she's ready to go in. Now, in my never-ending endeavor to seemingly overcomplicate the crap out of every job. 
Trust me, I have not let you down. I went over to the lathe and I made a special tool to install this. Now this special tool took me, I don't know how long, an hour maybe? But like I said, I don't want to disappoint. Now the way this thing works is, you can see it's got a little step and a shoulder on it, or a little shoulder. And this uh, glass, you can see, has a little bit of a, of a recess behind this metal lip. So I measured that. It's like... Uh, uh, 15 thou, so it's roughly a 64th of an inch. I cut that shoulder so the face of this is about 10 thou away from that shoulder. So essentially what it does is it goes in there and registers on the inside of that lip. And the maximum or the major OD of this, I cut this 3,000 smaller diameter. What do you know? It's tight. <laughs> Alright, hang on. I'll be right back. My objective here is to make sure that when I press this thing in, and I don't think it's going to go in at all anyway, I think that's pretty much flush, but just in case, I didn't want this thing to be binding up in there. So right now, you know, you could push it in, but it's going to be fine just the way it is. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that it sits flush with the surface. Now we're going to go ahead and get set up to press this in, and to do this I'm going to use my Grizzly Drill Press. Yeah, why not? It's got a quill, it's got an arm goes up and down, and why not give it a shot, huh? Alrighty then, everything is set for an epic failure. So let's get the O-ring in place and get my special tool. That's how that'll go. We're gonna line that up. I got a skosh of Loctite 515 on that. And we're gonna put this there. I'm gonna try to get you in the shot here so you can see. I'm gonna work from over on this side. <sighs> I don't wanna go that way. Almost, yep. Epic failure. That ain't right. Alright, maybe not. Just didn't want to go in straight. You know, I've never done it before, but it doesn't look like it's screwed up. Just kind of went, you know, wah, wah, a little bit on the way in. Sometimes that happens. The glass, or I'll show you this up close here in a second. The the glass, no, I call it a glass. The plastic is, uh, is not marred up or anything. And that's definitely in. Okay. Let me break this setup. We'll take a closer look at it. All right, that's okay, but I tell you what, in retrospect, you don't need to use the Grizzly drill press or any other. Um, it's actually overcomplicating things, but when do I ever do that? So what I ended up doing was I just laid it on the vise and just used that tool with a tappy-tap-tap, -tap, a little tiny hammer. You know, this guy, tappy-tap-tap -tap on the tappy-tap-tap-tap-tap, and it seated right in. So if I ever do another one of these, screw the drill press. I ain't going to do that crap. That's stupid. You just line the thing up and hold it in a vise, you know, hold it square, line it up, tappy-tap-tap, -tap, and drive that thing right in. But it looks good. It's definitely seated because, you know, like when you're driving a bearing, when you hit this thing, you can hear it gets solid, dunk, dunk, you know, but you don't want to hit it too hard. You crack this thing. They're pretty hardy, but, you know, not like the hardy boys or something like that. Boy, that's dating me. That worked out okay. The tool definitely worked. I mean, I'm glad I made this. So this really wasn't too much of an overcomplication because otherwise, how do you get a purchase on that to drive it in? All right, so we'll let it. Um, we'll let that 515 set up a little bit, and then we'll come back. Um, I'll throw the crap back in it so it doesn't just spill shit everywhere, and then uh, we'll put some fluid in it and make sure that it doesn't leak before we install it back on the bike. Oh, hey, it's my clock. I can do what I want with it. That's long enough. Oop. I don't see nothing. Do you? Looks drier than a popcorn fart on there. All right, guys, so where are we at? We're done. Here's the finished product. All installed. All bled up. Clutch works again. Now, again, this does need to be rebuilt. It was just a mistake on my part for not ordering the rebuild kit for it when I did the front and the calipers and all that stuff, right? But it works, and it was working before. I was confident it would come back, so it did. You know, it, it's it's fine for now. But if I was, like, going to go out of state or something with it, uh, like in a trailer, you know, go take a ride up in the mountains or something, I would definitely rebuild that first just as a good practice thing. It needs to be done. But uh, I don't have the parts right now, all of them at least. But it works for now. That definitely works, so we're good there. Those are the 18 millimeter sight glass kits. You can find them a variety of sources. I'll put a link to where I got them if I can remember where I got them from in the description. And they seem to be pretty good. I think I forgot how much they are. I have to put that in there too. I don't even want to guess. Let's um let's talk about some lessons learned. 
This was definitely worthwhile to make a special tool to uh, put this in with. No question about it. At least for these particular ones. All right. So as long, you know, I have four more of them. So if I ever was doing them on a customer's rig, I know these would work. All right. So this is this was definitely a good use of time to make this tool. That was a dumb idea, and absolutely overcomplicated. You don't need to do this. But I have never done this before, so I figured I'd try to do it in more of a controlled environment. And you don't need to do this. You pop it over in a vise, secure it, take whatever you're going to use to drive it in, and tap, 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 and it'll go right in. So, yeah, this was dumb. I don't know why I let you guys convince me to do this. So we have a brake master cylinder front brake that we made in-house as far as the sight glass goes. And we have a commercially available or bought one uh, in the clutch. So they look pretty much the same. You know, good enough at least. And uh, now you can actually see the fluid level. If you haven't seen the video on making this one here, um, I will put a link to that in the description. All right, fellas, so that's it. We're done. That's it on this video. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I definitely did. I learned something every time that I do something dumb. And using that drill press to push that in was definitely in that category. So speaking of categories, if you like this category and type of video, don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell. Like the video. Go like this. Helps my analytics. Then you get notified when I put another video up like this. If you actually want to get notified. So that's your choice. So until next time, guys, always remember, don't just repair. Restore. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.